On the southwest coast of Great Britain lies the area known as Cornwall, and on the windward coast of Cornwall lies the moorland village of Zenner. Within Zenner is a building, the tallest building in the town, the Church of St. Sonara. Within that church is a bench, and on the side of that bench is something quite unusual for such a setting. It's a mermaid carved in the ancient centuries-old wood. The people of Zenner say the mermaid was carved in remembrance of an event that happened long, long ago. You see, there once lived a young man named Matthew Trewella. Like nearly all the men of Zenner, Matthew was a fisherman. This suited him just fine because he loved his work, and he loved his work because he loved the sea. At the end of every day, Matthew, like almost all the citizens of Zenner, would shuffle into church to give thanks for that day's harvest from the sea and for the safety of the fishermen. Now, as much as Matthew loved the sea, he also loved to sing, and he had a beautiful voice. As a matter of fact, Matthew had the most beautiful voice that anyone in Zenner had ever heard, and it was always he who would sing the closing hymn for each day's service. It just so happened that at the end of one beautiful midsummer's day, the doors to the church were left open. And as Matthew sang his song, the beautiful music drifted out the door and onto the wind. At that moment, a mermaid named Morverin was also enjoying the lovely day as she sat on the large rocks of Pendower Cove, combing her long hair. The sweet sound of Matthew's voice rang out from the church and touch the mermaid's heart. All too soon Matthew's song was over and the mermaid slipped back into the sea. But at the same time the next day she returned to the rocky shore to see if she could hear the beautiful music again. Sure enough, she heard Matthew's voice carried faintly on the wind. She would return to those rocks at the end of each day for many days and eventually she began to wish more than anything to go on to the shore and see who or what could possibly make such beautiful music. Her longing became so great that Morverin went to her father, Lear, the king of the sea, and asked for permission to go in search of the music. At first King Lear was reluctant to grant her wish, and he said, No, we sea people do not walk on land. The thought that she would never know the source of the music broke Morvern's heart, and the mermaid began to cry. Now, I have to tell you, a mermaid hardly ever cries. Morvern's tears greatly concerned her father, and melted his resolve. He gave his permission, but he warned her, Speak to no one, and return to the sea before high tide, or you can never return to your sea home again. Lear commissioned his finest seamstresses to fashion a long dress made of a fine blue-green silk, the color of the ocean itself, so that she could walk among the humans and not be noticed. On the dress, the seamstresses fastened a number of pearls and blue sapphires found in the holds of ships lost at sea. When Morverin saw the lovely dress, she was overjoyed. She embraced her father, thanked him, and swam up towards the shore as Lear shouted, Take care, my daughter. I will, father, she shouted back. As the people of Zenner entered St. Sonara that day, Morverin rose from the waters and made her way slowly and clumsily to the church. She walked inside and sat on a small bench by the door in the back, just as Matthew began his song. Morverin closed her eyes and listened. And by the end of that song, her heart belonged to Matthew. When he was nearing the end of the tune, she rose from the bench and walked out of the church. This scenario went on for a while. The mermaid would, would arrive just before Matthew's song and leave just before it ended, never talking to anyone. Some of the townspeople had noticed the beautiful woman sitting in the back of the church, but nobody knew who she was. Matthew had noticed her, too as she sat with her eyes closed listening to him sing. One day, Matthew's song was so beautiful, Morvern couldn't stand to miss a single note, 
and she stayed just a little longer than usual. As Matthew sang the final note, Wolverine sighed and opened her eyes. It was a very small sigh, but Matthew heard it, and he looked at the mermaid. For the very first time, Matthew saw her eyes. There was something about her eyes. Well, they were a lovely blue-green like her dress, but it was more than just their beauty. In her eyes, Matthew saw the sea that he so loved, and at that moment he knew. He knew that he loved her as well. So Matthew walked quickly to the back of the church, and he caught up with Morvan just outside the door. Wait! Please don't go! Who are you? he asked. Where do you come from? My name is Morvrin, she replied. I come from the sea, and I must return before the tide is higher. I can never go back to my home again. I will surely die. Matthew was so enamored of the mermaid, he pledged, If you cannot stay, then I will follow you wherever you go, because with you is where I belong. He scooped her up in his arms and headed down the rocky path towards the sea. By this time the service had ended, and the people of Zenner were leaving the church. They walked out just in time to see young Matthew carrying the beautiful stranger onto the shore. Before they knew it, Matthew waded into the water with Morvrin still in his arms, first to his knees, then up to his waist, and then they both disappeared under the waves. Morvrin and Matthew had gone to live in the kingdom of Lear, and though the people of Zenner never saw Matthew again, they did hear him. They heard the faint sound of his voice as he sang love songs and lullabies for Morvrin. Matthew also learned the songs of the sea people, singing soft and high if the day was to be fair, and deep and low if Lear was to send a storm, so the fishermen of Zenner knew when it was safe to put out to sea or when they should anchor their boats and stay at home. To this day, it is said that if you sit above Pendower Cove at sunset on a fine summer evening, you just might hear Matthew singing faintly on the breeze, for he still sings to those who will listen and who find meaning in the voices of the waves and the whispers of the winds. And so, the people of Zenner remember young Matthew Truella, and the mermaid who came to their village and sat on a small wooden bench in St. Sennar just to hear him sing long, long ago. In this remembrance, her likeness is carved on the end of that very bench. It sits in the church, it stands in the town of Zenner, which is in Cornwall, in the southwest of Great Britain. And so, the story ends right back where it began.